She's hired First Amendment specialists, sir. attorneys David Wasserman and Larry Walters. Basically what we do, we fight City Hall and we win. Act three, after hours. I have to type in an address, I have to go to their home, their cyber home, I have to knock on their door and I have to pay money to get in. What you have here is a new medium for disseminating information that nobody knows how to deal with, including the courts, the police, and the prosecutors. It's like the wild, wild west. Thanks for staying with us and Bill O'Reilly in the personal story segment tonight, Sex, Rights, and the Internet. What people do on their own recreational time should not form the basis for a termination under public policy, particularly when what they're doing on their recreation time is protected by the First Amendment. But back to the edge. Thanks, Sarah. And joining me now from a very noisy newsroom in London is child advocate Lynn Costello. And in Orlando, Florida, is Larry Walters, a First Amendment attorney. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Larry, what are the chances of that happening, this exhibit being banned? Well, I hope it doesn't we get banned it. if we end up, uh, you know, upholding First Amendment rights in this country. I mean, certainly the museum has the right under the First Amendment to display this artwork. It doesn't have to be acceptable to everybody. It might be offensive to some, and I'm sure it is. However, the First Amendment protects offensive and even outrageous speech. That's uh, one of the founding principles of our country, and so I don't think there's a legitimate chance of it being banned. Do you have any empathy for Lynn's position? She has talked to the parents of these murdered children who find absolutely no irony in this work or, and, and found it downright offensive. Well, you know, I certainly sympathize or empathize with anybody who's offended by it, but certainly they don't have to look at it. And if we ended up banning all speech that was offensive to some people, we'd have very little left. Lynn, there is a theory. The oh, go ahead. I'd like to ask the gentleman, has he got children? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Could you feel like this if she'd murdered your child? Oh, absolutely not. And in my opinion of the artwork is absolutely irrelevant to the legal analysis, which is that the museum has a right to show it, and the artist has a right to paint it in our country, and we're very thankful in this country that we fought for many years for those rights. Lynn, you get but the do last word. They then, do they have the right to show anything? Is everything or anything art? Where do morals start? Larry? Well, you know, they would have to show uh, under United States law that the, um, the piece of work was obscene, and in order for it to be obscene in the first place, it would have to be um, sexually oriented, and this isn't a sexually oriented picture, so certainly it couldn't meet any definition of obscenity, and it shouldn't be banned. The very sensuous Miss Sapphire. Strippers in Jacksonville are being warned tonight. They'll be thrown in jail if they show too much in a club that sells alcohol, like the Gold Club. Strippers there have been busted a number of times by police, and now they want to bust the police in court with a lawsuit. They're using um, a basically a political issue, um, topless nude and um, adult entertainment, to occupy their time, to go have fun, and basically have a boys' night out. Lawrence Walters is the attorney who filed the suit in state court. He says police have been getting drunk, waving their guns around, and sexually harassing the dancers during undercover sting operations. Chief David Sembach says that's just a pack of lies. Do my officers consume alcohol when they're in there? Yes, they are, they're undercover. They do consume and purchase a small amount of alcohol. It's all documented. If a club sells alcohol, by law, dancers are not allowed to expose certain parts of their body or touch the customers. The two dancers who are listed as plaintiffs in the lawsuit were arrested for revealing too much of their buttocks. The manager was arrested simply for being the manager. And although they're not claiming to be innocent, they say that they shouldn't have been arrested in the first place. Walters says it's the police who are breaking the law when they arrest people for violating a city ordinance. You basically cannot arrest people for ordinance violations. These are not crimes, and the only thing you can do is issue notices to appear. Police used to write fines, but found that just wasn't deterring the dancers. We found that previously, if we just write misdemeanor citations, as soon as we walk out the door, the girls go back doing exactly what they were doing. Walters also claims that male officers forced the girls to undress in front of them when they were being arrested. Force them to change clothes in front of a bunch of officers, while the officers, of course, jeer and sexually harass the performers.
Nelson. I'm Rob Nelson. You're fired. That's what Howard Warman's company told him after discovered he'd sent what they thought was a sensitive movie clip from his computer at work to his personal computer at home. He's retained Lawrence Walters, a First Amendment attorney, to look into possible, possible excuse me, legal steps he can take in retaliation to his company. Thank you both for joining us. Does that, is that seem odd that someone could get fired for this, or is it more common than I realize? Well, it, it, it seems odd. However, it's happening all over the country. I have a number of cases where people have been fired for simply things that they do in their off time, um, what they say on the Internet, uh, pictures that they post on the Internet, et cetera. And so it's becoming more and more common as people have more and more access to communication. Mm -hmm. And employers are judging what we say on our off mm -hmm. time and the pictures that we post and how we express ourselves on, mm -hmm. on our off time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, the law hasn't caught up with, with the technology. In Florida, for instance, we have a law that says uh, it's a felony, actually, to audio tape a conversation, to audio tape. Um, but videotaping is free reign. So Even in a bathroom? Yeah, and, and so the technology advances quicker than the laws can keep up with it. But so the, this, the, the company can legally put that camera in the well, bathroom? I, I would say it's an invasion of privacy, but I, I, what difference does it make what you say on the Internet and you're off time to the business reputation? I mean, you know, people should have the right to express themselves. And it, the employer, um, you know, at least in a free country, shouldn't be able to tell people how to think and how to express themselves. Well, in their I think the employer, no, then they're, and they're not. They're saying, though, if you work for us, you can engage in certain actions, even on your own time, that are such an embarrassment to us or such, ha such cause us harm that it's inconsistent with the type of mm -hmm. workplace we're establishing. Would they're you not agree saying that you can't do these things. Right. They're saying if you want to work with us, there are limits that we want to say are important with regard to your behavior. And would you agree that those limits should be expressly detailed well, before we become so sensitive to sexual harassment these days? Exactly. In a number of cases I'm, I'm handling, the issue is always sexual harassment is why these individuals are fired. And in this society now, the employers have become so concerned with being sued for sexual harassment and their liability that we're overreacting. You know, you can't flirt with somebody, you can't say hi to somebody in the wrong way these days uh, without, you know, being so One I person out there. make a comment that. about that. Yeah, real I quick. Like what are you doing? What can he, can he can sue, a, what, a, a tort? Absolutely. Like wrongful a privacy term, invasion yeah. tort? Well, it's wrongful Seclusion termination. Seclusion of intrusion or whatever it's called? Oh, wrongful termination. Wrongful termination, yeah. Basically so not for invading his privacy, but for wrongly firing him. Right, yeah, the issue I, I think is, is, is better on a wrongful termination case. The invasion of privacy is, is kind of a side issue, um, but you know, basically what, what the courts have said is that you can fire somebody for a good reason or no reason at all, but not for a bad reason, you know, a reason that violates public policy. And uh, I think that that's where we'd be headed in this case. And you know, he worked for a newspaper, for God's sakes. I mean, it, you know, if anybody should support the First Amendment and free speech and free expression, it should be them. Um, right. So, you know, I think that we have a, a pretty good case on that. And, you know, um, if he's got a better job, then, then that's good. And he's still entitled to be compensated for the time he was off of work and for the humiliation that they put him through in those <laughs>
and you're facing jail time. I don't get it. Larry, what's, what's the uh, reason she's getting prosecuted and others go free? Well, this is the first uh, obscenity prosecution against adult content on the Internet that uh, has been brought in the United States. And the reason that we believe that it occurred is it because it emanates out of Polk County, Florida, ah. which has gone after every adult entertainment establishment, every adult bookstore, every adult dancing establishment in the county and they have Larry, a I hate so much to cut you off. Now, again, I don't support your website, but I do support you being treated equally under the law. Good luck to both of you. The First Amendment isn't there to protect the majority. It's to protect the rights of the minority to express themselves in controversial ways.